If I say the invasion of Germany, most people will think I'm referring to the Allied invasions of Germany in 1945. But there was another invasion of Germany that took place right at the start of World War II in 1939 that no one ever talks about and few have even heard of. An invasion that could have altered the whole course of the war if its initial successes had been followed up. The long road to war had, by the summer of 1939, become a short path. Germany appeared determined to invade Poland, and France and Great Britain had entered into agreements to go to war with Germany if Hitler touched Poland. To this end, France had begun to mobilise on the 26th of August, and by the 1st of September was ready for war. The French army of 1939 owed more to World War I than modern warfare, relying heavily on static artillery, an out-of-date mobilisation system and the decentralisation of its armoured strength to support infantry divisions, rather than concentrating tanks like the Germans did in their panzer divisions to achieve armoured breakthroughs. But though a bit creaky and old-fashioned, the French army nonetheless had in place a plan to deal with the upstart Germans, should war actually break out. And break out it did on the 1st of September, when German forces attacked Poland using the new concept of Blitzkrieg, or lightning war. Polish forces resisted valiantly, but it was an unequal struggle, and within a week the Germans had made enormous inroads into the country. What could France and Britain do to aid Poland? Not very much directly, owing to geography. But France did see an opportunity. The bulk of Hitler's forces were fighting in Poland, meaning that only light defences remained to defend Germany's western frontier regions that abutted France. Germany had 22 divisions in the west. 13 of these divisions were formed into the German First Army, commanded by General Erwin von Witzleben, protecting the Saarland. The area called the Saarland, an area rich in coal and industry that had been occupied by France after World War I between 1920 and 1935, had returned recently to Germany when Hitler had regained the lost territory following a regional plebiscite or regional vote. Therefore, from its long years of occupation, the French army knew the region well for military planning purposes. Facing the German First Army was the French Maginot Line fixed defences of huge forts, bunkers and emplacements that the French thought would guard them against a future German invasion. It was anticipated that France and Britain would launch some kind of attack on Germany, but both nations feared a German aerial counterstroke and the bombing of their cities by the Luftwaffe. They didn't know that 90% of the German air force was battling in Poland at the time. However, some action was taken. Commanding the operation to invade the Saarland was General Maurice Gamelin, directing his 3rd, 4th and 5th French armies. The French offensive kicked off on the 7th of September 1939, four days after Britain and France had declared war on Germany. The French army outnumbered the defending Germans. Eleven French divisions advanced along a 20-mile front near the city of Saarbrücken. German opposition was weak. French forces marched largely unopposed into Kardenbronn and the Vant forest salience, these bits of Germany actually jutting out into France. Light reconnaissance units crossed on the 7th of September, followed on the 9th by the infantry and tanks. There was no real resistance. German troops and officials had organised an evacuation. It was all rather bizarre. As French forces invaded, German power stations in the Saarland continued to supply electricity to France. But German minefields and booby traps were very dangerous. The French advance ended in a snail's pace. By the 9th of September, the French had seized the Vant Forest. The German First Army reacted by launching a local counterattack at the village of Appach. Two French motorised divisions, five tank battalions and artillery occupied a slice of German territory. German anti-tank fire against French Shah B1B tanks was ineffective. Yet French tanks did not press forward 
probably fearing German panzer forces, but there were no panzers facing them. The Germans possessed no anti-tank weapons in the west that could knock out French tanks. If the French had pressed their attacks, nothing would have stopped them. But the French remained ignorant of German weaknesses and very wary of their opponents. The cautiousness of the French army was almost comical. In one village, a single German machine gun held up the French for an entire day. However, by the 12th of September, further French gains were made. They had seized a total of 12 towns and villages in Germany. The deepest penetration was five miles. Then the French advance came to a halt as her forces approached the Siegfried Line, the heavily defended line of obstacles and bunkers that protected the old western border of the German Empire. Some French units were only a few miles from the Siegfried Line, immediately east of Saarbrücken. French artillery began to bombard the Siegfried Line defences, but without much effect. The largest guns they brought forward were of 155mm calibre, too small to dent the concrete bunkers and defences. On the 12th of September, the French met with British government representatives. By this stage, both nations believed that Poland was going to be defeated. German forces had reached Warsaw on the 8th of September. The Polish army was still fighting resolutely, but the combined German armoured and aerial offensive was pounding their armies to pieces. The French therefore decided to halt all operations, while the French and British governments developed a long-term plan. The Polish government was informed that a full-scale offensive into western Germany was delayed until the 20th of September, but events soon overtook this decision. On the 17th, in a move not widely known today, the Soviet Union launched an invasion of eastern Poland in a cynical grab for territory, cooperating with the Germans. Poland was to be dismembered between the two dictatorships and cease to exist. French forces immediately began to withdraw from the Saarland, and the full-scale offensive was cancelled. Only small holding forces remained on German territory. Poland was defeated soon after, allowing Hitler to shift his forces west, and on the 16th of October 1939, he launched a counteroffensive into the Saarland pushing out the remaining French forces and actually taking some French territory. The short-lived offensive had cost France 2,000 casualties and four tanks destroyed by mines. The German First Army came off better. 196 Germans were killed, 356 wounded and 114 missing. The Luftwaffe lost about 11 aircraft. But the invasion poses some serious questions. What would have happened if the French, with British support, had pressed their invasion with more divisions and the necessary heavy artillery to deal with the Siegfried Line bunkers? An all-out French offensive in September 1939 could very well have made deep inroads into Western Germany against inferior opposition. Would Hitler have been forced to scale back operations or even stop the invasion of Poland to reinforce the Saarland? Could Hitler have been brought to the negotiating table in 1939, preventing his attacks on France and the Low Countries in 1940? These are all intriguing questions. But the French and British governments lack the resolve and will to carry out such an ambitious project, and the French army's ponderous mobilisation and deployment hampered a faster and more developed strike against Germany. But if the French generals had known what was to happen to their nation just a few short months later, perhaps they would have prioritised an invasion of Germany in September 1939. The Saar offensive remains one of the great what-ifs of World War II. German General Siegfried Westphal stated that if the French army had launched the attack in full force in September 1939, the Wehrmacht, quote, could only have held out for one or two weeks, unquote. Colonel General Alfred Jodl was critical of the lack of an Allied offensive in September 1939. It seems strange. 22 German divisions were faced by 110 French and British divisions in the West, yet the Allies remained largely inactive during the Battle of Poland. France and Britain would pay a heavy price for that inaction. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton.
And you can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.